What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be learning about how to write a text-based adventure game in C Sharp. Now there's nothing I love more in coding than something relating to a game. I love playing games and you probably do too. And you know, this is probably the simplest game you could possibly code um, that I could think of off the top of my head anyways. And yeah, it's just a great starter project. It's, it's very fun and you can build on it as far as you want. And yeah, let's just hop right into it. So what you need to do is go ahead and open up Visual Studio or whatever C-sharp environment you'd like. And we're gonna make a console app. Go ahead and click next. And we're gonna call it um, Adventure Game. All right guys, now that we've loaded into our project, let's just go ahead and get rid of the initial stuff that they've provided us. Now, before we begin, you should probably have some sort of story in mind. You could definitely make it up as you go, but I, I would definitely say it's easier to like kind of draw it out and you know, uh, draw out the different paths and stuff that you'd like to have the users be able to play before you begin. And you might ask yourself, hey, Sean, what do you mean by that? And, uh, you know, I could kind of explain, you know, you can use paint or maybe you have it on a notepad or whatever, but um, essentially you're gonna have a question and the, here's, let's say, here's the user, right? You're gonna have a initial question and then there's going to be, you know, a kind of yes, no, or like this or that, or whatever you wanna set it up as, but you know, there's different paths based on how they answer the question. So I was just trying to say that you should probably have it laid out in your head ahead of time before you begin this. That way it's just easier to write the program. As you continue on here, it's kind of like a tree or like a bracket. You know, they, they answer different questions at different steps and they go to different paths. So that's all I really mean by that. And uh, yeah, let's just start coding. So our story begins in a haunted mansion that you have inherited from a distant family member. And uh, yeah, how we're going to do that is we're going to first say console.writeline because we're going to print out this kind of backstory to the user. So what we're going to say is welcome to the haunted mansion. And right above this uh, right line here, we're just going to say, you know, print backstory to user. And yeah, I'm just going to keep laying out the story. So we're going to need another console.writeline. And our second line is going to be you are a distant family member of a rich millionaire who has just passed away, leaving this mansion to you. Let's go to the next line here. And let me zoom out just a tad so you could see the whole line there if you wanna pause the video. I'm gonna zoom back in. Our third line is going to be, yet again, another console.write line. This is just adding on some more backstory. So now we're gonna say, now that you are the newfound owner, you decide to take a look inside. Because of course, if you inherited a house, a, a, just some random house, you'd like to see what's in there, right? And this next line here is just going to give some context about what the house looks like for the person playing the game. The house is dated, creaky, and falling apart. And then now I'm gonna say, you walk in the front door. So this is where the game really begins for the person playing this. Um, you know, they have a backstory of how they got here and you know what the house looks like. And now they know that they're inside of the house. And now that they're inside of the house, now comes our first ever question. What we're going to say is console.writeline. Do you want to enter the living room or the dining room with a question mark? And this is kind of how the game's going to work, um, at least the one we're, that we're coding today. You know, we're going to have one option or the other, a yes or a no. And you could definitely build four options, six options, but you have to keep in mind, the more options you have, the more complex and long your program is going to be. So now that we've asked the user our first question, we need to enable the ability for us to collect what they are answering. Do they wanna go into the living room or do they want to go to the dining room? So what we're gonna say is prompt the user for a choice. And what we're gonna first do is console dot right instead of right line and what this is going to do just put a little carrot symbol in a space this is going to instead of start a brand new line it's going to just write it and then what we're going to do right after this is console dot read line and actually we're going to say string um, room choice is equal to console dot read line and what this is going to do is print this little caret symbol with a space and then start reading that exact same line. So it's kind of like a little console. If you guys have ever used the command prompt, you'll notice it's kind of set up the same way. So you have this little file path and the caret, and then I could just type in whatever I want afterwards, and it's a console. Um, and that's kind of how we want to set up our program here. 
Alright guys, so now that we know we have the room choice stored inside of this variable here, we're going to set up our first ever if and else statement. So we're going to first have um, this comment here, and we're going to say uh, ask player which room they want to go to. And then we're going to have an if, and then an else if, and then an else. And the else is really just to make sure that, you know, if they didn't enter living room or dining room, then it just kind of prints out like, hey, invalid input type deal. And it's super easy to set these up. So we're going to say, hey, if the room choice entered is equal to, and then um, living room in here, and then the next one's going to be if the room choice is equal to the dining room in this one. And then, you know, if it's not one of those, we know that they entered something else. All right, guys, so let's first be lay out the path for our living room. Um, in here, we're going to have another question and then like another path from that question. So now that they say like, hey, I want to walk into the living room, we need to, you know, kind of paint the story of what's in there, right? So we're going to say console.write line and then just print out you chose to go into the living room with a period. Then we're going to have another one. So another console.write line. And now we're going to have a little twist. So they're in the living room, but what's in the living room? And we're going to say as you walk in, you see a sleeping pit bull guarding some gold jewelry. So obviously if this is real life and you walked into some old creaky room and you saw a sleeping pit bull, at least I would have instant diarrhea. But I don't know about you guys, but I would definitely not poke the bear on that one. I would definitely probably leave. But you know, that's just kind of a cool little backstory we can give them. And now that we've given them that backstory, now it's time to ask our next question. So as we said in the story, um, you know, they're guarding some gold jewelry. So an appropriate question would be, do you want to steal the jewelry? And this gives the user an interesting choice. Do they want to go ahead and attempt to take the jewelry and not wake the sleeping pit bull? Or do they just want to leave the room and simply not, you know, die from this thing? And yeah, we're going to ask that question here. And as we did before, we're going to prompt the user for a choice. So like earlier, we're going to have console.write with a caret and a space. And now we're going to have string pit bull choice is equal to console.read line. And now we're going to have another if and else and an else if. So we're going to have if and then an else if and then an else. And this is kind of how every single tree is going to be set up. Um, that way, you know, if any time they enter in the wrong input, we'll always have an else to kind of catch it. So this is more of a yes, no question. So it'll be a little simpler. So string uh, pipple choice is equal to yes. We want to do that stuff. And if it's equal to no, then we want to do that other stuff. So first we're going to lay out our storyline for the yes option. So they go ahead and attempt to steal the jewelry from the sleeping pitbull. So what happens, we're going to go ahead and tell them via a console dot or write line. As you probably would expect, um, you attempt to steal the jewelry, but the pit bull wakes up and rips you to shreds. And because you got ripped to shreds, let's read or write out another uh, line here for our game player. And now we're just going to say you have now died. So let's just assume that this pit bull absolutely murked you and now you're just gone. And now that we've done that, the game's kind of over. That's as far as we're going to go for this tutorial in terms of this storyline. You know, we're just going to have one option and then another option. We're not going to go super in depth, but you know, this is plenty of framework for you to understand how these are set up and then just keep building off this if you want to. So if they decided not to steal from the pit bull, What's going to happen? Well, we're going to write to the console once again, and we're just going to say, you decide not to steal the dog's jewelry. Then we're going to have another console.write line. And because it, the game kind of ended here with the yes, we kind of want it to end here as well for the no. And all we're going to say is you turn back and find your way out of the house safely. If they answer no, they kind of escape the house alive. If they answered yes, they die. And then for the else, this is obviously if they entered in anything wrong, we're just going to say invalid choice, please answer yes or no. And the reason we're gonna 
provide them kind of the answer that they should have given is because it's not always super clear. Do they want to steal the jewelry? Someone can answer like, yeah, but spell it differently or I don't know, just spell it differently or use a different variation of saying yes um, rather than just yes. So, you know, if they enter something else or maybe they just are close, but they're not quite right, we should just give them the answer that they should have chosen. All right, guys, that's going to complete the storyline for our living room. Now let's move on to the dining room option. So the very first thing in our dining room is just going to be writing to the console. You chose to go into the dining room. And now that they're in the dining room, let's give them some more backstory or context. And what we're going to do is as you walk in, you see a shiny vase on the table. And now comes our first question for the dining room path is, you know, console.writeline. So they see this shiny vase. Um, now we ask them, do you want to open it with a question mark? And now, just like earlier, we're going to prompt the user for a choice, console.write with a carrot and a space, and then string vase choice is equal to console.readline. And just like our living room um, path from earlier, we're gonna have an if and an else, and oops, I almost forgot, and the uh, else if, of course. So the first one's going to be if the vase choice is equal to yes. Then the second one is going to be if the vase choice is equal to no. And then the, obviously the last else is if they entered some sort of wrong input. And we can actually copy the same line up here because it's another yes, no. So this will be invalid choice. Please answer yes or no. And while we're down here, we might as well lay out our last or our else from the very first question of the game. So they had to choose living room or dining room. We can do something similar here. So invalid choice, please answer living room or dining room. So for the yes answer, we're just going to keep it simple. They go ahead and decide to open up this vase and what's in the vase. So we're gonna say you open the vase and find a pile of bones. Obviously that would be kind of creepy to find a pile of bones, but you know, that'll just, would kind of just leave the ending up in the air. We won't say anything else, and the game kind of just ends there. Just leaving the user, you know, a little bit questioning what's going on. Now for the no path, let's uh, let's give it a little more story, a little more creepy of an ending. So we're going to say console.writeline here. And the first thing we're going to tell them is you decide not to open the vase with a period. And here comes the creepy part. So we're going to have console.writeline. And obviously, so you didn't decide to turn, or you didn't open the vase. Um, so you probably like turn around, try to head back to the entrance or whatever. So we're gonna say, as you turn to leave, you hear a cracking sound coming from the corner. I don't care where you are. If you hear a cracking sound coming from the corner and it's dark, um, I think that's, that's grounds for instantly um, just freaking out. So uh, let's keep expanding on the story here. What we're gonna say is a dark, figure with glowing red eyes launches at you, knocking you unconscious. Obviously that's terrifying um, if something were to just launch at you. And the final thing of the story is instead of ending it on that super dark note, what we're gonna do is you wake up in your bed. It was all a dream. And I think that's a cool, fun little way to end it right there because you might be wondering what's happening next. Am I going to wake up and what's what's going to happen? But in reality, you're just having a nightmare. All right, guys, we are not quite done yet. Let's just go ahead and run our program and make sure that it works. So we're going to put this in the middle of the screen here. Welcome to the Haunted Mansion. You're a distant family member of a rich millionaire who has just passed away, leaving this mansion to you. We know this already. I don't have to read it again, but I want to go ahead and enter into the dining room. And you'll notice this takes us to the dining room path. And, uh, you know, you walk in, you see this shiny vase. Do you want to open it? Yeah, sure I do. And you open the vase and find a pile of bones. So that's awesome. We know our storylines are working properly. And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this tutorial for our text-based adventure game. The code will be on GitHub, and I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's very simple, but very fun uh, way to just kind of build up your programming skills. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.